Hey everybody, it's Damian Lupo and David Morris here at EQRP and Financial Underdogs. We are in the middle of looking over the data from a massacre in the markets today. I mean, literally, David, this was the worst day since 2008. Uh, 2,000 points that the Dow dropped, S&P dropped 7%. And I mean, that's, that's just some of the stuff. I mean, th what the 10-year was down at 30 basis points, which is unprecedented in I mean, in history, we've never, we've never seen this before. And, oh, yeah. and then like, we've got, what else we, we have the VIX at 55, you said it almost hit 60 or is right. I mean, that when basically, if you don't know what the VIX is, this is a, it's a sentiment of, of fear. And when that thing goes up, it means there, there's a lot of fear and a couple of things over the weekend that happened, obviously coronavirus is, is going bananas and it's, it's an exponential growing problem globally. It's shutting down logistics chains and things not it, we, as if that wasn't enough we had saudi arabia and russia get into a pissing match wanting to produce more oil and instead of doing their normal cartel thing where they basically say okay we're going to have a limited amount of oil and keep the prices high russia wanted to sell some more and they said no we're not going to agree and so china said well fine we're going to put or sorry not china but saudi arabia said we're going to push more into the market and we're going to give china china our preferred vendor discount we're going to shave off six or seven bucks a barrel. So we opened up at like 30 today, which is, I mean, this is like a 25 or 30% drop yeah. uh, like overnight. So all these things together, we've just got a market that is in full on freaking meltdown. I mean, what, do, what are you seeing right now? Yeah, man, it's crazy. Uh, there's obviously a lot of panic. There's a lot of uncertainty in the market. I think, you know, with the coronavirus, what you're seeing is people don't really know how bad it's going to get. And I think, um, and it has the potential to shut down supply chains across the world. Um, and people don't know if that's going to happen. And if it does, like how bad is that going to be on the market? So tons of uncertainty around coronavirus. And now you've got the, uh, the oil dropping so low, Saudi Arabia just flooding the market with oil, um, intentionally pushing the price down. What's crazy about it is the two countries that are fighting in this oil war um, neither one of them can stay solvent at the levels that they're currently at. So hopefully, right, hopefully they can come to some type of a resolution on this. But the problem is, is that we still don't know when that's going to be. Is it going to be a week? Is it going to be a month? Is it going to be three months? Who knows, right? And so I think that uncertainty is what's causing the market to, um, to react the way that it has. Um, and then so what you're seeing is you're seeing this flight to bonds. And the flight to bonds is what's causing our interest rates just to be crushed. You know, we've been sitting at, at a lower level of rates for probably the last 10 years, right? Ever since the financial crisis, when we had quantitative easing, um, pushing our rates super low, it, it stayed that way. But the United States rates have been much higher than the rest of the world, right? So if you've looked over at Germany and whatnot, their rates have been in the negative territory for quite some time. And when you're looking at a rate environment across the globe, that is super low in American rates, even though they're low or still like hundred basis points or more higher than the rest of the world, then all of a sudden we're cheap. So when flight to quality happens, everybody flocks to the U S rates and that's what's pushing our rates down the way that it's pushing right now. It's a little well, scary. It, yeah. I mean, it's, we, people should be generally concerned right now because we've been in this bowl and we've, we've talked about this a lot, both online mm -hmm. and offline for a number of years that, there, this bull is tired, that it's yep. just been going straight up. And the, the central banks are trying to work a coordinated effort to prop this thing up. But when you have fear, even if you hack off a quarter or maybe a full point, we're mm -hmm. going to be at zero before you know it. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if we're at zero, completely zero to quarter on the Fed overnight rate by June. Like yep. because of the rate of, of collapse that's going on, they're basically going to run out of bullets. Yeah. Uh, one, one of the thoughts I had, and you know, this is just a theory, but who knows, it, when, when Saudi Arabia is doing what they're doing, one of the things that that does is it, when you cheapen oil, mm -hmm. it, it makes companies, the electric companies, the electric car companies look a lot less interesting because cheap oil, hey, who cares? We've got our gas guzzlers. Why do we care about electric? So right. even though that's the trend, like Tesla is taking a, a beating right now in the markets. And the other companies that are doing really, really bad, like across the board, everybody's getting hammered. But if you look at the banks, their TCE, which is their total combined exposure to the oil industry, like the US oil industry is getting crushed right now. Just, just today, 
because they can't sustain themselves. I mean, like Saudi has some of the cheapest oil to produce because it's the easiest, but we're, we're going, the, the places, most other places like the U.S., it's a lot more expensive. And so $30, it, like you said, it's unsustainable. In the U.S., it's totally unsustainable. Oh, yeah. the, the lenders, the big four, which is J.P. Morgan and Chase, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and Citi, have massive exposure to these oil producers and, these, and the different companies, the oil support companies, in terms of lending. So mm-hmm. you saw like Wells Fargo was down, I think it was like 12% today. And you saw that kind of stuff happening because of the exposure. This, and we haven't even talked about the derivative exposure. I mean, the yep. derivative exposure is, the, is, is a quadrillion. That's a thousand trillion dollars. So here's, here's the, the thing that you should be concerned about. How much control do you have of your assets and your money and what the heck are you in? Right. It's, it's a lot of information and you're thinking, okay, bonds and oil and gold. And I mean, actually gold, gold is up today. Why is yep. that? Because it's a flight to safety and people right. say, all right, what, what is, what has no counterparty risk where if I hold it, nothing can happen to it. That's gold. That's it. That's yep. the only thing that is, is out there. And so there's, there's a flood to that. And like you said, there's a flood to the bonds. So you know, what do we do? Cause a lot of people are sitting there going, oh man, maybe I should have pulled some money out of the market, but right. I didn't. Yep. And and so what do I do? And a lot of people's 401ks and their retirement accounts, IRAs are inside this market and this market is melting down. This is not something, and I, I'd be willing to bet the farm on this. This is not going to be something that gets pumped up and fixed this week. We're going to see a lot more carnage, a lot more blood. And so what do you do? One of the things that we, we help, we've been helping people for a long time do is get their money out of this Wall Street casino yep. and put it in, in your hands with the EQRP that allows you to invest in things like gold, things like property, like real assets. Because what are we talking about with the markets? We're talking about a lot of, a lot of paper and a lot of lack of control. I mean, that's- lack, Total lack of control, right? I mean, you, you're looking out there and you're listening, you're listening to people talk about spreads on bonds, right? And I'm going, guys, like, who cares if the spreads have widened when the yield is only 60 basis points? Like nobody can make any money doing that. So, I mean, what you, uh, our focus is, mine and yours is precious metals, real estate, right? And why? Because if you have a cash flowing piece of real estate right now, you don't really care what's going on in the market. You know what I mean? And, and if you have gold and it's performing, right? So, I mean, that's why you do, that's why we do what we do. We've been saying this is going to happen in the market for years year after year we were wrong but you know what uh, we think it's prob- probably finally here well know? we i it, it our, our friend peter schiff says this a lot he's been saying this for a long time in fact when i was working with him in connecticut on his senate campaign he said we're, we're this thing is going down and he wasn't wrong he was he's simply early and right. that's the same thing <clears throat> and, and that's the the thing when people say oh you know you're you're a naysayer or you know they they basically say you're you're a debbie downer the 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 reality is we're looking at fundamentals yep. and the fundamentals don't support what's going on technically in the markets. It doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. And so we were right, but mass psychology drives things crazy. And when you, when you funnel trillions of, of basically free dollars into the system, it's going to prop things up for a while. And what we're mm-hmm. finding now is it was a black swan that would trigger it. We actually have two black swans. We've got the coronavirus <laughs> and we, we got a flock of swans. It's like a flock of seagulls, but these are black swans. And then the oil situation, you compound. I mean, it's an exponentially devastating compounding effect when you put those type of things together at mm-hmm. the same time. And, and that's what we're dealing with right now. So what do you do? Like people are always asking, and, and I know that uh, our friend Robert Kiyosaki on Rich Dad says, okay, good. That's good information. But what the heck does somebody do? What does the average listener do? Like, what, what do we do now? And, and what you do is make sure you know where your money is. And if, you, if, you're, if you're in things that you don't feel like you have control or you don't understand, uh, it, it's probably a good time to pull out and say, okay, let me take a pause. Uh, one of the things that you and I've heard a lot is people say, like, especially the, the idiot financial advisors out there, and there are, some few, there are a few good ones that I, you and I both know, yep. but there are so many that they just, it's the, the company line. Hey, don't do anything. Just stay in it for the long term. And why do they do that? Because of fees. They want to make sure they continue to get fees so they can continue to get paid regardless of how badly you're getting beat to death in the markets. Yep. Like yep. You, you've seen this because you've been in the financial industry and, and the markets for decades. I mean, this is what, this is the, it's the typical pitch or the calming factor. Don't do anything. Just hang out. Everything just will be relax. fine. It's okay. 
The worst thing you could do right now is sell. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'll I, say I, that. <laughs> I, I look at that and, and people say it, it comes back because even when things go down, it's, it's like you listen to Jim Cramer from Mad Money on CNBC right. and Bubble Vision. And, and he says, oh, this is a great time to buy this or that. And I'm, I'm looking at him and I'm going, it, it's kind of like the National Association of Realtors saying it's a bad time to buy a house. Those words will never come out of that organization's mouth because it destroyed <laughs> the industry. Right. So are you going to have Wall Street saying, uh, don't buy this when all of their advertisers are either pharma companies or mutual funds. Like right. they're never going to say that. They're not going to say, "Hey, put your money in the sidelines, go buy a bunch of gold." They're they're they're, they're going to just keep saying, "Hold it, hang tight." Most people don't know. I mean, you know this. Our, our clients know this. That when the the markets collapsed in 1929, it took 25 years for them to break even. It was 1954. So markets don't necessarily come back in a day or a month or even a year. Sometimes it can take years or decades, you can't afford to have a hoping strategy. Like, like I like to say, smoking a bunch of hopium isn't going to work. No, nope. you're just going to be dumb and high, but it's, yep. you know, ultimately you're going to be broke too. So what, you know, what, what do we do? Get control, get clear. Clarity is where that power is. Mm -hmm. If you, if you know where your stuff is and you start making decisions, but you and I have seen this a lot, unfortunately with people where they'll say, well, I'm, I, I've got people looking out for me. And, and we say, really? So you're abdicating responsibility. The, that's, that's not a good strategy. That's a terrible strategy. You got you to take responsibility. And, and it's, it's not even about delegating it. You really need to own it because this yep. is your money. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when it comes to retirement, you know, the, the smoking of hopium, you know, everybody just kind of sticks their money in there in hopes that it does good over time. And then they freak out when something like this happens because they have no control, right? So now is the time for you to kind of wake up, smell what's going on and, and get your hands around your money, get your hands around your retirement account so that you can go put into things that you're interested in. If that's precious metals, if that's private money lending, if that's real estate syndications, whatever it may be that interests you, that you're going to be invested in mentally, not just financially, um, you're going to be more successful that way. And then when something like this happens, you're not going to be freaking out because you just lost 25% of the value of your portfolio. Well, and, and a lot of, one of the things that's really valuable for people to con consider is that if you are just watching things go up and down and that's your entire strategy, you are a gambler. That's not investing. <laughs> right. in, investing is where you have a consistently feeding system of, of cash flow where it's predictable. I mean, mm -hmm. investors know with relative certainty, even like professional investors will look at deals. When we look at deals, when you and I look at deals, there's an expectation that four or six out of 10 are going to go bankrupt. That's, we just expect that. It's, we're, we're not hoping that they do good. We just know that a certain percentage of deals are going to go bad and, yep. and it's all math. We're, we, but unfortunately, most people say, well, I hope that my market strategy works and that everything goes up. Like this right. is literally the stupidest thing that's been beat into people's brains that you're supposed to put your money into a system, but it's a great system for the system. Like oh, the system works really well to keep the folks really rich and keeps those, those fees coming in. And here's, here's your worst enemy. It's three little letters. It's called AUM. And it's, it's not bad if somebody's in alignment with you, meaning if you've got somebody that makes money with you and you make money, and that's, the, and that's how they, they make most of their money, that's great. But our system is not set up for that. Our system is set up to make sure that the system always makes money on your back every yep. time. Regardless. Regardless. We're, down. We're, we're, we're watching the markets right now. There are people, the, the system, the advisors, the traders, they're all making money today. You know who's getting killed? People that are, have put their life savings into the system. And it's unfortunately, it's going to continue to go on so long as people are ignoring reality of taking ownership and responsibility of their life. We can help you fix that. You yep. know, pay, pay attention to what we're doing. Let us help you get control of your money. Uh, pay attention to financial underdogs. We're going to have a lot of tools here where you guys can learn and, and really start shifting your thinking around your money psychology. Because at the end of the day, it really just has to do with how you look at things and whether or not you're willing to be a chicken little or, or, or you know, a chicken head. Like, you, are you going to be one of those things or are you, are you going to say, nope, neither one chicken is not part of my vocabulary. I mean, yeah. you have to, it's a choice. I right. mean, ultimately it, you get to choose. So we're here, we're here to help you guys. Uh, I, there, there's going to be more. We're probably going to have a, a lot more commentary and a lot more stuff because it's a lot to digest. I mean, mm -hmm. you have 
the politicians, you have the news, you have all these different sources, and we're getting buried alive in information. And most of it's not, most of it's wrong. Like it's and it's sensationalized to keep us attached oh, yeah. to, to the the red. Like if you look at the top of CNBC.com right now, it's super funny because it's a big red bar. We're we're addicted to red things because we think why blood, right? It's yep. dangerous. So maybe this will help you guys clarify what's going on and then give you some ideas uh, to, to shift a little bit and, and do something different to where when you go to sleep at night, you're not freaking out wondering what's going to happen at the opening bell, which is a horrible way to live. And unfortunately we've, we've been trained to be in that thing and to be the prey, um, uh, the prey food, you know, wall street's the prey and we're like, or no, wait, wait are we the prey? We're, the, the masses are being eaten alive. So <laughs> It's, it's, you know, that, that bottom line is we're the food. Okay. How, how's that? We're, we're the food. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that helps you guys. Uh, we're going to have, we'll, we'll, we'll be looking into this and, and talking with you guys more tomorrow in the coming days and weeks to give you any insights we have into this, try to make sense of it and, and then share other resources that are, are really great. One of the great resources, if you want to get deeper insight into what's happening with coronavirus is Chris Martinson with peakprosperity.com. He and Adam Taggart do amazing work, far better than any media organization or even the World Health Organization. Literally, it's, un I mean, he just, he calls it like he sees it. He's honest and he uses data that he can get uh, and puts it together and kind of puts the puzzle together. So if you want to understand what's happening, highly recommend peakprosperity.com. Look up Chris's stuff. He pretty much does a video every day right now. And you're just going to get insight into what's really going on because putting your head in the sand and just saying, I hope it works out is one of the dumbest things that anybody can do right now. You got to be aware and then make decisions. Otherwise you're going to be chasing your tail. Yep. All right, guys, that's it for today. Uh, be safe and be salty. We'll see you guys soon.